The Future of Medicine, Organs on a Chip. This year, we have seen our world change. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected each and every single one of us. This year, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has meant that people have had to struggle. People in New Zealand and people all around the world. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen people lose their loved ones, their jobs, their income, and individuals are struggling to provide for their family. Because of a small viral particle, billions of lives around the world have been changed. If there is one thing that we've learned from the COVID-19 pandemic this year, is that as humans, we have an urgent need for medical treatment. Two important forms of medical treatment is through medications and through vaccinations. But in order to develop a medication or a vaccine, it can take up to 10 years, cost billions of dollars, and that's on top of all the potential harmful side effects that humans and animals may have to go through. But what if I told you there was a cheaper way? What if I told you there was a faster way? What if I told you there was a safer way to create and to test out new medications? Well, that is all possible now thanks to the technology of organs on a chip. But before we talk about that technology, we first need to define what the problem actually is. The problem is that there's an increasing demand for medications, not just around the world, but in New Zealand as well. You see, as our population ages, as the life expectancy increases, more people are living longer, and that means there's going to be an increased demand for medication usage. But the cost of developing just one medication or vaccine is around $2.6 billion. Not only that, but in order to create and, develop and to test out just one medication or vaccine, on average, it takes up to 10 years. You have to go through all the clinical trials. First, you have to test it in the, uh, the lab. Then you test it on a small number of animals and then humans, and then you increase that number. It can take a very long time. So first of all, it's expensive and it takes a long time. See, that's problematic because when we have a pandemic like the one that we're having this year, when we need something quick and effective, we can't rely on the current method of testing out new medications because it will take years and years to develop. We need something quick. Not only that, but there are countless number of medic conditions out there that for, for which we still need more effective and more safer medications. Additionally, when we want to try out new medications, we have to go through clinical trials, and that means exposing animals and humans to potentially fatal and harmful side effects. But what if there was a solution to all of this? Well, there is, and that is through the solution of organs on a chip. Now, you might be thinking that this is some sort of futuristic and non-fictional idea that may never come into existence. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, the WIS Institute at Harvard University have already created an organs on a chip and they've already done experiments where they're trying out different agents. They've created a lungs on a chip. And I want to take you through that specific example to show you how organs on a chip work and how they can be used to test out new medications. So the example that I'll be using is lungs on a chip. As you can see through this diagram, organs on a chip are basically created from different layers. These different layers are made up of different human cells, just like how a normal human organ is made out of. And we can put in different things through these different layers, for example, medications and agents, to see how different cells and different layers respond. So let's take you through the real example which has already been created, the lungs on a chip. The top blue layer, that's the air layer, and that is made out of human lung cells. The bottom layer is the blood layer, 
and that is made out of human capillary cells. In the top layer, air passes through carrying oxygen and potentially even carbon dioxide. And in the bottom layer, we have nutrients running through. And in both layers, we can introduce different medications that we want to test out. Additionally, on the sides, you can see the different vacuums that are there. These vacuums can inflate and deflate these layers, just like how your lungs inflate and deflate. So these layers mimic the environment that are inside your own lungs. So we've got this micro environment of lungs on a chip. At the West Institute at Harvard University, for a lungs on a chip, they also tested out bacteria. So they introduced bacteria in the first, the top layer, the air layer, and in the bottom blood layer, they had white blood cells. Now, in normal lungs, you see when there's bacteria present, white blood cells actually move across the layer and try to fight that bacteria. Well, this is exactly what they found on the lungs on a chip. When these white blood cells were moving across, they noticed the bacteria, they actually moved through the layers and uh, attacked the bacteria just like how you would see in normal lungs. So they showed that physiological uh, mechanisms are still working on this lungs on a chip. Not only that, but that there are now experiments looking at testing out other organs on a chip. For example, um, the blood-brain barrier on a chip, the heart on a chip, the liver on a chip, the gastrointestinal tract on a chip, a blood vessel on a chip, and even as we mentioned before, as I mentioned before, the lungs on a chip. And there's experiments at looking at potentially combining all these organs on a chip together to form an overall human body on a chip. And we can introduce medications and agents through these different layers and test out how these different cells and different organs on a chip work together in response to a medication or an agent. So through this technology, I think there are some clear economic benefits. Firstly, in New Zealand, we don't really test out new medications. We're not that big on pharmaceutical companies. But this technology can put New Zealand on the map for pharmaceuticals. Through this technology, we can save up to $2 billion to develop just one medication. Because through this technology, we don't have to go through all the clinical trials. We don't have to go through all the testing. We can use this technology to see how medications will affect human cells. And so we can save billions of dollars in all the developing and the trials that go on. Not only that, but if we create a successful drug, one successful drug can generate up to $5 billion of income each year. This income can then be fed into New Zealand's economy and it can be used for things like healthcare, infrastructure and education, therefore benefit, benefiting the New Zealand society overall. <clears throat> there are also clear social benefits. Firstly, through this technology, there will be greater availability of safe and effective medications. We won't be using humans and animals for testing, the, testing out new medications through this technology. So there's going to be less harm done to animals, done to humans, through all the potential side effects that come with clinical trials. Through this technology, we can be ready for uh, potential future outbreaks. You see, through this technology, we can create and test out new medications quickly and effectively. So when we have pandemics, like the one that we're having this year, we don't have to wait years for a vaccine or a medication to become available. It can only be a matter of months. Not only that, medications will generally cost less because the cost to create and test out these medications will be less. That means that treatment will become more equi equitable and more people will have access to medical treatment. This means overall healthier lives for all. There are also clear environmental benefits. You see, clinical trials can produce significant greenhouse gas emissions. There was one paper that I was reading that said that one clinical trial that lasts about five years can produce up to 630 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. 
that is equivalent to about 525 round trips from London to New York for just one person. In this technology, we won't be going through all those clinical trials. Therefore, we can be saving t uh, hundreds of tons of greenhouse gas emissions. Not only that, but in New Zealand, over 250,000 animals were used for, uh, for scientific experiments and purposes in 2016. That's problematic because from these animals, there's a significant amount of animal-related waste. Through this organ uh, on a chip technology, we won't be using animals and therefore we'll, we won't be having all this uh, significant animal related waste and therefore reducing our overall carbon footprint and making New Zealand even greener and even, a sa even safer place to live. So through this technology, there, there are clear economic, social and environmental benefits and it's not a futuristic or a non-fictional idea that may never come into existence. In fact, this technology is already available. But the best part that I like about this technology is that it will affect individuals in New Zealand for the better and it will mean healthier lives for all. Thank you.